Do you need help protecting your finances as you enter retirement? David Dickens of KC Financial Advisors has got you covered. Welcome to the Cover Your Assets KC podcast. Thanks for joining us again here on Cover Your Assets KC. I'm Walter Storholt alongside David Dickens, President and Wealth Advisor at KC Financial Advisors. Great to have you with us today. David's got an office in Overland Park. If you're nearby, you can always come in and say hello. Just find out ways to contact David by checking the show notes section of today's show or go to CoverYourAssetsKC.com. David, I understand with all the family visiting, you got uh, to the, the feeling of what it was like to be young again, chasing a two- and four-year-old <laughs> all around for several days in a row. Uh, what, what is most sore, legs, back, upper body? <laughs> the whole thing. The whole thing. <laughs> Are you That's more why, sore uh, after playing with them versus uh, like if you did three straight days of golf? What's, what's the more pain on the body these days? Oh, much more sore chasing <laughs> little boys around, I'll tell you that. But it's a lot more fun, too. I mean, that golf ball is pretty fun, but um, these little guys are priceless. So They're, they're, they're quite dynamic, right? <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are. That's fantastic. Yep. I, uh, I think my favorite thing about that age of uh, playing with kids, having had a, f- a few nieces and nephews go through uh, that stage recently, is the fact that just a cardboard box can entertain them for hours and can just, you know, it could just the imagination, it takes you back to when you, you were that age and you can kind of remember how your imagination could take you so many places. Why is it that we lose some of that imagination as we get older, I wonder? Boy, I don't know. Maybe, uh, too many things to worry about, perhaps. It's almost like you had seen, uh, like you had a camera in my entry hall at my house because my wife keeps some very large cardboard boxes bundled up down in the basement. (laughs) And when the boys get here, they all come out and it's either a spaceship or a a ship, a boat, or it's all kinds of different things. It's something different each time, but we had the cardboard out this last week. That's fantastic. It can be anything you want it to be. That's the the beauty of it all. (laughs) Well, glad you uh, survived the visit, and uh, it, it should only get easier from here, I would think. So the, as they become more and more independent, you can, you know, you'll be able to keep up with them more and more each time they come down. So, Well, maybe. I don't know, Walter. That sounds like a young man's view of the world. I'm looking at through my lens thinking, wow, these kids are going to get tougher and tougher to keep up with. <laughs> I guess until they stop viewing you as a jungle gym, it'll actually get harder and harder, right? Because they're going to start weighing more and more each year. <laughs> exactly. Well, these are good problems to have, David. So, uh, again, that's uh, it sounds like you've had a fun couple of weeks here to start the summer off. And we've uh, started the summer off with some good episodes. We talked about the three worlds of money on the last episode. And today we've got something a little bit different for you, uh, kind of inspired by David's mailbox, in fact, and maybe inspired by all of our mailboxes. <laughs> I've been getting, just as it sounds like you have as well, David, Lots of solicitation from various companies, one of them being uh, AAA. We're not throwing them under the bus or anything on on today's show, so I think we can mention them by name. Uh, But, you know, just encouraging you to get different types of policies and not just the the car coverage and those kinds of things, but all sorts of insurance potential coverages and that kind of thing. And that's what caught your eye, right? Uh, uh, Something that was talking about group life insurance coverage? Yeah, exactly right. And it happened to be triple. I'm sitting here looking at it right now. In fact, my... (laughs) My desk is covered with a whole lot of papers because I wanted to have some actual facts to to talk about and make this, hopefully make this spring out of your your radio or your iPhone uh, today as as you're listening to this. But I did get a mailer from AAA and and there's absolutely nothing wrong with this mailer. It's about um, they are doing group term life insurance. And I happen to be a big term life fan, but I thought it would be helpful to go through the different the, basically the three ways that people get term life insurance. This one, the big selling features that they highlighted were that it's priced by age bands. There are no lab tests, no health exams, only three questions that you need to answer. Those being, uh, have, you used, have you smoked in the last 12 months? In the past three years, have you received any treatment or been diagnosed for heart trouble, cancer, stroke, lung disease, liver disease, etc. And in the past 12 months, have you had a diagnostic test performed or recommended for an undiagnosed condition? If you can answer all three of those no, then they're going to give you the amount of insurance, life insurance, term life insurance that you want for a 
printed price that also comes on this mailer. And that's what we really want to talk about today, which is how do you go about getting the best, cheapest form of term life insurance based on where you are in life? I like it. So, I mean, it sounds like a nice deal up front, right? Less hassle of going through the process to get that insurance. And also, it's nice and spelled out in front of you. I mean, I'm a consumer today, David, where I like that. I like to know what the price is. I hate going places and they don't disclose the price up front. Just just treat me like an adult. Tell me what the prices are going to be for various things. I don't like the marketing games sometimes that come along with, you know, you have to call or get a quote or set up an appointment or come in and see us and have a conversation on the phone first. Just, just tell me what the, the starting point, at least. Let me know what the ballpark is. So I, a lot of that, you talk about it being actually a nice piece of marketing material. I mean, AAA does it right. Obviously, they should with all sorts of data and research that they have. It's kind of fun whenever you get something from AAA in the mail, right? Even if you know you aren't interested in anything in it, it's always colored. The envelope has color on it. It looks nice. They always pack those things full of stuff. So you kind of feel like you're getting something exciting. And <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they've, they've got that game figured out. And it sounds like even to, down to the product level, they, they have it well thought out for sure. They do. And I'll bet they do a lot of business with this. And there's, and again, I want to reiterate, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this or any other company like this that would send you something for group term insurance. It's just, if you're healthy, it's just not your, your best avenue for getting this product. So there are really three ways to get term life insurance. So let me back up one whole level. There are three main types of life insurance, term, whole life, and then some sort of indexed universal life. Whole and, and universal life, we are not going to talk about today. All I want to talk about today is term life. And this is important to you, whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, or 60s. This has a broad application, and I'm going to try to give you an explanation as to why it's important to each of those major groups. So the three main ways that we get term life insurance in this country are through your employer, through a group, which can also be your employer, just uh, but a group like AAA, and then I'm going to call it do it yourself. And you may that you may do do it yourself through an agent, like people like me, uh, who financial plan and do insurance products as well, or through a website like SelectQuote.com. So those are the ways that we get term life insurance in America. So what should you actually do? Well, if your employer is offering, let's just say two times your salary in, in life insurance. Let's say you make $100,000, they're gonna give you $200,000 worth of term life insurance just as a benefit of working there. Well, you take it, it's free, so to speak. You take it and be happy. Then uh, what you need to do, your second step is to go to some sort of calculator and calculate how much more you actually need before you decide where to buy it from you want to try to determine, well, how much do I really need? Maybe two times my salary is just enough. So, Walter, you and I have talked about um, this calculator that I use. It's an online calculator. I think it's really good. There are probably 10 other ones that are just as good. But what I like is at, at bankrate.com. We've put that as a link to a couple other podcasts we've done. And then backslash calculators. And then it's going to ask you, oh, life insurance calculator, and you're gonna click on that. So just to, just to make it real, I actually did one of these this morning and put in some assumptions. And I wanna make, so I wanna read this to our listeners so that we get a, a real number. Two times your salary is kind of the base that your employer might offer. So then the bank rate calculator says, first it says how much money you need in burial expenses. Well, I just put in eight grand. It says how many years of income will you need to cover? I'm assuming that this is a 40-year-old person and they want to have 25 more years of salary covered if they were to die tomorrow. So 25 years. How much annual net income will your survivors need? Well, I assume that this person made $125,000 or $150,000 a year. So I said their survivors will need $100,000 a year for as long as they live. And then it asks, well, how much money do you already have in savings and investments? Let's say your 401k or other things. And I said, well, this person has $200,000 of other investments. The calculator then asked, do you have any children? I said, yep, got a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old. 
And then it says, well, how much money are you going to need for each kid to go to college? And I said, well, 100 grand a piece. And then it spits out a, rec- a recommendation. Now, Walter, I am not going to ask you what you think that number is, because that would be unfair. The number was actually a little bigger than what I thought it was going to be. But there's some descriptions that talk about, well, we, took, we, we looked at 2.5% inflation for the income you're going to need and a few other assumptions. But with I, all I would guess those, almost a million dollars. Well, that would have been a really good guess. Okay. I just um, assumed you were going to have some sort of nice round number for us or something pretty close to that. It's actually a fairly nice round number, but the number actually ends up... So with all those inputs, the number actually, actually ends up being just over a million seven. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this assumes that your spouse that you leave behind is... Probably going to, if, if you're 40, let's say that that spouse is 40 and they might live for another 45 years because that would be kind of sort of normal. So it's a long time to think about providing for someone once you're gone and a couple of kids and their needs, including college and et cetera, et cetera. You probably have a mortgage. So once you put those in, a million seven sounds like a big number, especially if your employer provided term life insurance is kind of 250 or 300,000 dollars. That's a big big gap. And I think it's super important for everybody in your 20s, 30s and 40s. And a lot of people in their 50s that still have a big mortgage or maybe they have kids in college to go and do this type of calculation. Don't guess on how much term life insurance you should have. It is so cheap, which I'm getting ready to demonstrate in the next five minutes. Term life insurance is so cheap right now because your chances of dying in your 30s, 40s, and 50s is really pretty low. But if you do and you leave people behind, it can be catastrophic for those people. So the cost for a low probability event ought to be pretty low. And what you want to do is calculate What's the risk I'm trying to insure, and where can I get really good coverage really cheap? That's what the rest of this podcast is about. So I hope I have perked up your ears, whether you're 32 or 42 or 52. What you want to do is you want to find out where's the cheapest place to buy this. So what I did was I have a, I have a calculator on my desk that shows me, you know, the the top 15 issuers of term life insurance in the country. And I just compared it against this group coverage from AAA. And my guess is, based on the, the quality of company that AAA is, that their group insurance rates are going to be super competitive with other groups that are out there. Now, this also includes, once your employer gives you that one or two times your salary in insurance, they're going to offer you more that you can buy from your, with your own money. And that's what you want to compare against what we're getting ready to talk about in the do-it-yourself realm. Again, do-it-yourself whether you use a company like mine or whether you truly do it yourself on something like SelectQuote. I kind of remember back one of my first jobs had some of that included life insurance which wasn't very much. And then as part of the orientation, they had in a third party who came in and talked about additional coverages that you could then purchase. They must have had some sort of deal with this company where they let them come in and talk to new hires in exchange for you know something, I'm guessing now looking back on it. But I, exactly. I remember going through that those conversations, and that must have been what that was, looking at some sort of then group coverage to that you can add on to the existing coverage. So. Yes. Interesting to peel those layers back a little bit, several years later, you know? Yep. And it's the simplicity of the group that makes you think, ah, maybe I ought to just do that. Because if you apply individually, you're going to have to be underwritten. And that means that somebody is going to want to talk to your, that insurance company is going to want to talk to your doctors. They're probably going to send a nurse out to your home or your office and take your blood pressure, maybe take a vial of blood to check you out. Because they're at significant risk of you dying. You may have paid 
ten or twenty thousand dollars over a ten year period for a policy that pays off a million dollars. Well, they want to make sure that they're insuring healthy people. Whereas with these group policies, they band a lot of people together and they can take on, they're willing to take on more risk, but they're also charging you a significantly higher rate. How it's, much higher? It's well, kind of the same as uh, health insurance, but flipped, right? Like <laughs> po pooling resource. I don't want to take us down another rabbit hole, but I'm just sort of looking for, well, this is the same concept of getting health insurance and pooling together risks and things like that. In that case, actually drives the price down versus going out and getting a policy on your own. Usually, at least in my experience, you get better deals when you're with the, the company plan. And maybe that's because they're supplementing things by pooling those risks or the employer's helping out with some of those costs. But it seems to work similarly, but at the same time, maybe have opposite effect on the pricing. And I, I wonder if that's also because um, dying at, in, in your 30s or 40s is really a pretty low probability and you can tell a lot from somebody's heart, blood work, stuff like that. Whereas the things that would health insurance would, would insure against, that's super hard to tell from those same types of tests. Now, I'm not an actuary, and I don't really know how they do this stuff. But here's how the, here's how the numbers work out. So I'm looking at this, um, at this mailer from AAA, and I'm looking at a 50. Well, let's start with a 60-year-old male, because that's kind of sort of where I am. They are saying that for a non-smoker, age 60 to 64, a $300,000 policy would cost you 283 bucks a month. If you qualify on your own with the same parameters, it's about 70 bucks a month. Pretty significant difference. That's a massive difference. That's four times more. And what I ran was a policy for a 60-year-old that would be a level premium for 10 years. This, this uh, group policy, once you turn 65, well, you don't pay 283 bucks a month anymore. You pay 491 bucks a month. So doing a little bit of work on your own, if you're healthy, if you somewhat regularly see a doctor, you're going to save a lot of money. Term life insurance is really affordable um, for healthier people. Let's say you're 50. And you still got a, a, a couple of kids in college. Maybe you still have a mortgage. Maybe you haven't really turbocharged your, your uh, savings in your 401k yet. And you're looking forward to those power years where you get everybody out of the house and you really start saving. But you don't make it. And you, look, you got your spouse left behind. That um, 300, same $300,000 policy through the group is 122 bucks a month. For a 50-year-old getting your own insurance, that same $300,000 policy doesn't cost 122 bucks a month. It costs 28 bucks a month. Wow. Again, a dramatic difference. What's, what's the price of admission? Well, you have to be underwritten for this type of policy. Uh, and you have to be in reasonably good health to get these types of premiums. Now, so then they also did one. I mean, these, these um, go down to as young as, say, 35 years old. And so I looked at a 35-year-old. And that price, it's only 37 bucks a month on this mailer from AAA. But if you go do it yourself, it's 11 bucks a month. So, and that is on a 10-year level premium. One thing I really like about term life insurance is you can buy a 10-year level premium and say, you know what, I'm 35, I'll do it for 10 years, and I'll see what it all looks like at 45. And for that, you're going to pay 11 bucks a month for $300,000. But let's say you decide, ah, I'd like to do 20 years level premium and not worry about it until I'm 55. Well, in that case, instead of paying 11 bucks a month, you pay 15 bucks a month for 20 years of the same premium. Level premium, no increases, can't cancel you if something bad happens. Well, let's say that you're 35 and you say, ah, I'd like to go all the way to 65. What would that cost me? That's got to be a big number, right? Well, the uh, same $300,000 policy, if you want it to be level premium for 30 years, is 25 bucks a month. Now, I don't know what's going to happen over the next 10 or 15 or 20 years, but let's just say that life expectancy keeps going up and these premiums keep going down because we're all living longer. 
Well, all you need to do is cancel this policy and get the new, cheaper version. You have a ton of flexibility in a term life insurance policy. One strategy I love doing for younger people is to layer them. Because as you get older, you tend to have less insurable interest, especially once you're in your 50s and 60s. Your kids are out of college. You've, you've really been pounding the way at that 401k. You've done a lot of smart things. Your house maybe is paid for, and you still need some life insurance, but you don't need as much. So a lot of times what I like to see people do is they'll, do, they'll layer them out. They'll have a 10-year a, a policy, a 15-year policy, and a 20-year policy, or maybe a 10, a 20, and a 30-year policy. And every 10 years, they just let one of them expire. They don't pay the premium anymore. And now, instead of having three policies, they only have two. But frankly, they only need to. This is all about uh, working into your strategy uh, a plan for if you get hit by a bus tomorrow, which is super unlikely. But if it happens, the people you leave behind are going to need financial help. And this is a super cheap way to get it. And the cheapest way is not through a group policy, but through one that you apply for by yourself that's underwritten. And I hope, as the numbers we've just been through will tell you, it is a fourth of the cost of a group policy or less. So there are super inexpensive ways to get this done. The most important step is to get on that calculator, put in your own type of information, and figure out how much life insurance do I really need? It's probably not zero. How much do I need? How much do I have? What's the cheapest way to fill that gap so that it's the best thing for me and for my family? And that's what I would encourage every listener to do <laughs> right as soon as this podcast is over. Get out to bankrate.com, use that calculator, and figure out you're very likely not overinsured. What you want to figure out is, am I underinsured? And do I want to take the steps to fix that? And make sure you're getting your life insurance in the right places for your situation. If you are, you know, of moderate health, even um, definitely going about it the DIY or the independent route could pay huge dividends. I mean, if we were talking, David, a difference of a dollar or two, or even even up to five dollars a month, I might say, all right, it, it maybe it's not worth the hassle to somebody to be able to just be approved right off the bat with one of these group plans and not go through the hassle of getting their blood drawn and tests done and, you know, getting scrutinized that way. I know plenty of people who would value that at $5 a month and maybe even more, uh, not have to go through that. But we're talking about pretty significant differences that really pile up to thousands of dollars over the course of several years in how much yeah, you pay. So. they do. And, and maybe you find yourself in a high-risk category and you say, you know what, that group life thing sounds pretty good to me. It's okay. great that it's an option, right? It's that a great, it, it's it's a great for option for, for low-level uh, underwriting. Answer three questions, and if they're all no, you're good. Uh, so there's something out there for everyone. Um, Do-it-yourselfers have a lot of flexibility and power these days. If it's not your thing, then call a firm like mine. The pricing on it is is probably exactly the same whether you do it yourself or whether you have somebody like me do it because term life is such an efficient market. So whichever way you go, make sure you calculate and then fill the gap. It's really, really important. This reminds me of when our refrigerator ice maker wasn't working the other day. And uh, I called out a, you know, a company to come help fix it because I was like, I don't really know anything about fixing refrigerators. I just didn't have the time to go on YouTube and try and figure it all out. And the guy comes and he's kind of looking around at the fridge and he's like, hmm, well, let's take He said, everything looks okay. I'm not seeing any burned out parts or anything like this. And he pulls it away from the wall and he goes, oh, it's not plugged into the water. <laughs> <laughs> and so he plugs it in and the water starts spitting out and it starts making ice. And he says, all right, that'll be $95. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I could have probably done that on my own. Um, you said, sir, thank you for your expertise. <laughs>
<laughs> next he, time I'll make sure to check that. <laughs> he was nice. He was even like trying to look for other problems he could spot to maybe like, I don't know, try and make something better or avoid a future problem. I was like, nope, nope. You just go ahead and call this one a win and head on out. You're good to go. <laughs> that, that's what this reminds me of. Like, oh, I probably could have done that and saved myself $95 if I had just even had the presence of mind to slide the uh, refrigerator out to see if it was still connected from the last time we'd had it. Uh, we had just done a kind of a kitchen renovation and I guess the contractors hadn't replugged it back in. And I just thought a couple weeks later, something had gone wrong with the fridge through all the construction. So lapse of judgment, but just would have been so easy for me to do that on my own. Well, that could be the case for so many people when it comes to life insurance. Just a little extra could save you a lot of money and even a lot more than that refrigerator mistake cost. So <laughs> uh, just just do, do that extra due diligence. Check it out on the calculator first. We're going to link to that in the show notes or the description section of today's show. So it's easy for you to find that life insurance calculator. See what your need might be. Let that be your starting point. And then if you need to talk with David and walk through some of the other options that you have when it comes to getting insurance and whether your health is a concern, you're not sure if you'll be able to get that underwriting for yourself and maybe you have to go with one of these group policies. Well, that's something that David can cover with you in the complete planning review, the process that he goes through with every client, not only looking at this element of your financial plan, but all the moving pieces as well. And if you want to get in touch, you can do that 913-317-1414. That's 913-317-1414 or online at coveryourassetskc.com. David, appreciate the help on the show today. This was a good one. And uh, we'll look forward to chatting again next week. I will look forward to it as well, Walter. Thanks. Join us again on the next edition of Cover Your Assets KC. Investment advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, LLC, BCM, a registered investment advisor. BCM and KC Financial Advisors are independent of each other.